Hey everybody, today we are talking about chocolate chip cookie murder as well as murder she baked. So today's review is going to be a little bit different. Instead of just reviewing a book, which as you might know, I've already reviewed this book, um, we're also going to be reviewing the movie that came because of this book. When this channel was first created, I was doing it with my husband. It was actually his idea to start the channel. And then things got really busy, we ended up moving. We wanted to have some videos together and some videos separate. We wanted to do book reviews, but also reviews on books that were also movies or TV show adaptions and like compare and contrast them and things like that. And after we moved and a lot of changes started happening in our lives, the channel kind of changed as well and I just kind of ended up taking over it. I think the only video like that we ended up doing was a series of unfortunate events because the series had just recently come out. So now I'm going to do one of those for you today based on the chocolate chip cookie murder by Joanne Fluke, which is the first book in the Hannah Swenson murder mysteries. And so I recently watched Murder, She Baked, a chocolate chip cookie mystery, and it is actually quite a good adaption in my opinion. And so if you have not read this book or if you have not seen the movie, I am going to go into spoilers for this because we are doing a compare and contrast type of video style here. So I am going to have to, you know, spoil a few things here and there. So if you do not want to be spoiled, then go watch the movie first or go read the book or do both or whatever and then come back and watch this. Otherwise, I'm just going to be walking you through this pretty much. It is on Peacock if you would like to watch it for yourself, by the way. That is where I watched it. So let's go ahead and get started. The movie starts out with us seeing Hannah at her home with her cat and talking to her cat, getting ready for the day to go to her bakery. Almost every book starts out in this series that I've read so far is her with her cat at home waking up, getting ready for the day. Um, she goes to her bakery. It's called the cookie jar still. The only difference that they made here was that instead of it being red, the, the theme is more of like this teal pastel mint green bluish color. Um, and so that's not really a big deal of a change. Um, and basically the book and the movie, in my opinion, go very hand in hand. There's not a lot that they change. We get introduced to a lot of our main characters really quickly. Lisa is working with Hannah, though Lisa in the book is like fresh out of high school, like getting ready to go to college, but her dad, um, has either Alzheimer's or dementia, I can't remember right now. She decided to stay home to take care of him and to stay with him and ended up starting to work with Hannah at the bakery. But in the movie, she's definitely older than that age. And so they they changed the age of that character. Um, but as we continue, we meet the mom and we meet Andrea, the sister and of who are both very fashionable and different than Hannah, which is true to the book as well. And then we find out that she's gonna be introduced later at a dinner party to Norman, which is same as the book too. And so when we meet Norman, he is a nice, good looking man. And in the book that he's kind of described as kind of like your average, looking man rather than like super fine. <laughs> so she meets Norman and things go just fine. Um, and the movie continues on. They, and then she ends up finding a dead body in the back of her bakery the next morning. And <laughs> while the delivery man is like, was eating one of her cookies. And that is actually true from the book as well. Like that whole scene was very much imagined the same like as the book. So then they bring in Mike, the detective, to come and help with this. And so Hannah, she's already starting doing some of her own sleuthing and meets Mike and happens to have just been dumpster diving when she meets him. And so she's all stinky and gross. And this is what Mike looks like. And I 
don't know about you, but I think that Mike and Norman, the actors that they chose, and the way that they look in this movie, they look very similar. Do they not? Do they not look like they could be brothers or something? I just feel like the only difference is like the haircut style and the narrowness of the jaw line. Mike has more of a chiseled jaw or whatever. Um, which I guess is what makes him all suave and super good looking and hunky hunk like he's supposed to be in the book. But honestly, I feel like they look so similar. They have like the same eyes. They have like the same similar smiles. But anyways, um, I also kind of imagine Mike, every time I imagine him, I imagine him wearing like a brown uniform. Obviously, he's a detective, not a sheriff. So that's like not really accurate. But that's just what my mind always imagines. We have the story continuing where Mike is trying to get clues and Hannah decides to get Andrea to help her try to get clues. It really just kind of plays out like, just like the book. I'm actually, I was pretty impressed how well that they got this in terms of matching. Aside from like what I said, they aged up Lisa, they changed the coloring of the cookie jar and everything. And they did actually make a pretty significant change in terms of the town. The town is called Lake Eden, but for the movie version, they call it Eden Lake. And in the book, there is an Eden Lake, but it's literally the body of water, like the lake. And then the town is Lake Eden. Um, but they changed it and they were like, welcome to Eden Lake. And I just thought that's kind of interesting. Like, I kind of like the name Lake Eden a little bit better. It just feels more unique and different, but they changed that for the movie, so there's that kind of a big change. The ending, she is starting to figure out who the possible killer might be. She goes to his house to check to see if he's actually there, so they kind of sneak into the garage. They find out that he's not there. Oh, there is another part that they changed, actually. So when they are trying to find this businessman that they think might... um possibly be the killer or know who the killer is they're trying to find this businessman and they sneak into the factory to try to get into his office to try to find some files and things like that to figure out if they can get some paperwork that would prove that he has something to do with this whole murder business and when they go to the factory and they go into the office they find him dead there but in this version they don't go all the way it out into the factory it's more like at a barn like an outdoor place and he's like covered up in hay and so they change the location of where they find that dead body um but yeah everything else after that he, she gets more clues she gets led to she needs to go pick up a bill from this party so she goes over to the to the house to get this um to the main killer's house to pick up this check basically and while she's there she um has a moment to herself hannah does where she can kind of sneak into an office and kind of look through some papers and stuff and she discovers that this woman whose name i'll put here because i don't remember but she's the killer and she is the one who killed the first two people because originally she didn't mean to kill them both but she thought that um ron overheard a conversation and so she's like i can't have any witnesses so then that's why she had to kill him so like yeah and then she has a gun she pulls out a gun and she's like i'm gonna kill you now hannah because you know no witnesses and stuff like that of course she gets saved just like she does in the book she doesn't end up getting shot or anything and all is well and she figured out the killer just a little bit before Mike did because Mike showed up to save her just in the nick of time um, because he had figured it out too and was on his way there. Um, so yeah, so this um, adaption, I think that they did a really good job sticking to a lot of the details of this book obviously there's always going to be some changes with actors and actresses and, and different things like that for example Allison Sweeney is the one who plays Hannah Swenson and she's a blonde but in the book Hannah is like a redhead and it's supposed to be all like kind of poofy and crazy and, and of course 
Allison doesn't change her hair to be red or whatever. She just stays her regular hair color and stuff. And that's not really a big deal anyway. I did want to say something about the music, which I forgot to do earlier, um, because it's very hallmarky, whimsical, kind of cheesy, like playful, kind of happy tone where sometimes in this story, I mean, it's a murder mystery. So sometimes it just kind of seemed like, why is the music so like dainty and happy right now? And it's just, it's the, that classic Hallmark trademark, it seems like, where Hallmark just loves using that kind of music in their movies. Um, and yeah, this one did not disappoint in terms of that, even though sometimes it felt like it made that made it a little more silly, but I think maybe that's also the point that this is supposed to be a cozy mystery, a little more lighthearted. It's just Hannah who's just taking a little try at some sleuthing for the first time. So it's kind of, it kind of also fits at the same time. So there it is, my review of the movie Murder She Baked versus the book Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder. I think that the adaption was really well done. There was only a few little changes that were pretty minor. Aside from the changing of the name of the town, I feel like that was kind of a bigger change that didn't really need to happen, but it is what it is. Um, but if you want to watch that movie and see what it is, it, if, especially if you've read this book, it's always nice to see characters come to life and see them visually and see how they do with an adaption. And I do think this one was really well. I was I was surprised at how it just seemed like everything was going exactly like the book. Like it was just like, oh yeah, this is supposed to happen and now it happened. This is supposed to happen and now it happened. And it just seems like they kept really well with the book and, and didn't change anything unless it just was necessary for the way that they filmed it. But yeah, so if you want to watch it, it is on Peacock TV. Thank you so much for watching my compare and contrast video today. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.